Welcome everybody. Uh, I'm very glad to see you at the Night of the English Philology. Uh, and this short lecture will concern one of the most famous cats uh, in the literature of the British Isles. Uh, it will have two parts, an introduction and a translation puzzle for you. Uh, I will of course uh, give my solution uh, to the puzzle uh, although uh, it will not be the only possible one, uh, since the beauty of uh, translation consists in the fact that there are many to infinite paths leading to the same goal, and the goal is uh, a smooth and uh, adequate translation. Uh, each target language and uh, culture uh, has its own peculiarities and uh, resources to manage with the task. Uh, so whatever uh, your mother tongue is, feel free to use it. Uh, be creative and let us begin. As you know, uh, there are many feline stars in the British literature, uh, such as the Cheshire cat, uh, the cat that walked by himself, uh, which uh, can be found uh, in uh, Radiot Kipling's uh, Just So Stories. Uh, and uh, there are a bunch of far fairy characters uh, from uh, Iliad's Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats. But uh, probably the most uh, mysterious uh, of all uh, is Pangor Ban. Uh, and Pangor Ban is uh, very peculiar because uh, it is an old Irish cat uh, uh, assimilated into modern English uh, through multiple translations. Uh, this, uh, this cat became uh, known and famous uh, because of, uh, of translations into uh, English. Uh, and then it proved so culturally attractive that uh, uh, there is uh, now even a, a beautiful uh, cartoon uh, titled The Secret of Kells. Uh, and uh, there is a series of books by uh, Faye Sampson uh, on the uh, cat and uh, its uh, friends. Uh, but the original Pangurban uh, is a hero of an old Irish poem written um, in the 9th century AD. Uh, the poem uh, compares uh, the work of a monk uh, trying to, to grasp the hidden meaning of the Holy Scriptures uh, to uh, his cat hunting for mice. And uh, it is a very nice, uh, nice piece. Uh, First, I will uh, read uh, its uh, most uh, memorable uh, English translation by Robin Flower. Uh, this translation is not very literal, uh, but um, it is quite sufficient uh, for our later translation puzzle. But if you want to see more scholarly translations, uh, and uh, if you want to listen to the original Irish text, you should look at the entry on Pang at Wikipedia uh, and look at the references uh, and uh, links um, I displayed uh, here. So feel free to, to pause the video and uh, use uh, those uh, links if you, if you want. Uh, now it's uh, time uh, for me to read, uh, to read the uh, poem about uh, the monk and his cat. I and Pangurban, my cat, tis like task we are at. Hunting mice is his delight. Hunting words I sit all night. Better far than praise of men, tis to sit with book and pen. Pangur bears me no ill will. He took like his simple skill. Tis merry task to see, at our tasks how glad are we, when at home we sit and find entertainment to our mind. Oftentimes a mouse will stray in the hero Pangur's way. Oftentimes my keen thought set takes the meaning uh, in its net. Against the wall he sets his eye, 
Full and fierce and sharp and sly, Gainst the wall of knowledge I, All my little wisdom try. When a mouse darts from its den, Oh, how glad is Pangur then! Oh, what gladness do I prove, When I solve the darts I love! So in peace our task we ply, Pangubam, my cat, and I, In our arts we find our bliss, I have mine, and he has his. Practice every day has made Pangur perfect in his trade. I get wisdom day and night, turning darkness into light. This uh, turning darkness uh, into light uh, uh, is beautiful metaphor, but it's um, but the original is uh, more mundane. Uh, the original is about uh, elucidation of uh, of an obscure uh, text. Uh, uh, here, uh, flower uh, flower made uh, made the text. Uh, more uh, more beautiful than it is in the original. Uh, okay, but uh, let us uh, let me say something about uh, about the history of the of the poem uh, because it uh, miraculously survived uh, in just one manuscript. Uh, uh, the manuscript is uh, called the Reichenau uh, Schulheft, or in English, uh, the Reichenau um, Prima. Uh, the English name is uh, not the best one, because the Prima is an elementary textbook uh, serving to, uh, as an introduction uh, to a subject of study uh, or a or a book uh, used for teaching children to read. Uh, its German name uh, is much better because uh, it literally means uh, a copy book from Reichenau. Uh, and uh, this is exactly what the manuscript is. Uh, it is a private uh, copy book of a monk uh, living around the uh, 9th century. And it contains a very peculiar mixture of text, uh, like, like Latin anthems, Greek declination tables, astronomical tables, and uh, last but not least, uh, uh, Old Irish poems. And the manuscript is nowadays uh, kept in uh, Lavantal. Uh, it's a monastery west of Klagenfurt uh, in Austria. But of course, one page is uh, is in Germany, in Karlsruhe. Uh, we do not know uh, who was the author of Pangurban and uh, how the old Irish poem found its way to the contemporary uh, Germany and Austria. Uh, there is a hypothesis uh, that uh, the author was uh, Sedulius Scotus. Uh, an Irish monk, uh, poet, and also theologian, uh, scholarly commentator, uh, who, know, uh, who knew uh, both Latin and Greek, uh, which was an astonishing feat at that uh, at the time. Uh, he lived uh, during the so-called Carolingian uh, Renaissance, uh, a, a brief period of uh, cultural renewal. In the in the state ruled by uh, Charles the Great and his successors, uh, it was the renewal taking place after the darkest centuries in the European history, after the fall of the western part of the Roman uh, Empire. And the surviving text uh, by and about Sedulius Scotus may suggest that. Uh, all his life he was uh, very busy with uh, fleeing from uh, from vikings uh, who were the the scourge of the of of the times uh, and first uh, he moved from ireland to to liege uh, in in modern uh, belgium uh, where at the time was a thriving cultural uh, center and uh, many monks from Ireland uh, uh, settled there. Uh, 
Then uh, he probably moved to Milan in Italy or to um, one of uh, Benedictine uh, monasteries, uh, monasteries in the wide region, uh, like uh, Reichenau or, or St. Gallen in, uh, in, in Switzerland. Uh, and there he died. Uh, the fate of his uh, Copy book is is known only uh, only from the 18th century A.D. Uh, when it was brought to to Austria. Uh, and now uh, it's time for a translation puzzle, and the puzzle uh, concerns the name of the cat. How would you translate Pangurban? Of course, uh, in all the translations I know, uh, this name is uh, simply left uh, in its original form. Uh, but let us assume for a moment that uh, it has some hidden meaning uh, and we want to render it in our uh, mother tongue. Uh, and for this we will need to uh, explore the context of the poem uh, and to uh, find a scholarly commentary uh, which i will now try to try to provide as you can see uh, the comparison between the work of an anonymous monk uh, attempting to grasp the tangled senses of the bible uh, and pangurban chasing the mice uh, is uh, quite uh, sophisticated uh, uh, and the most important clue for us uh, is that the cat is already perfect in its trade. Uh, it is perfectly focused on his task and uh, perhaps uh, vocation of uh, hunting mice. On the other hand, the monk is still far from being perfect. He is able to untangle the senses of the Bible. Uh, but uh, not always, and uh, the task is still very difficult for him. That's why he should learn from the cat. And here is where Pangurban's uh, name uh, should be uh, looked on. Uh, in Old Irish, bon uh, is an adjective, basically uh, meaning white. Interestingly enough, it has also another two meanings because it may stand for pure or even saint. Okay? And the first word, a pangur, uh, is uh, even more intriguing because this name is not Irish, uh, but of Welsh origin and uh, means uh, a fuller, uh, a person cleansing and thickening cloth by washing and beating it. Uh, Probably the word was used here because uh, the uh, white chalk uh, from Wales uh, used in cloth, cloth production uh, was uh, called uh, fuller serf. Uh, and this uh, gives us a strong uh, symbolism of, uh, of purification and sanctification even. Uh, the cat is uh, white uh, in a double uh, in a double sense. Uh, uh, it is physically white, uh, but also uh, it symbolizes uh, the way to perfection uh, through purification. Uh, perhaps uh, this uh, uh, is also about the contrast between uh, the Benedictine monks uh, monks robes which were uh, which were black uh, and and the cat's fur which uh, which was white here but uh, pay attention to this uh, symbolism of purification because I think it's intentional here uh, and uh, of course uh, the translation of, of Pangurban's uh, name uh, should be suitable for a cat of a monk hooked on studying the Holy Scripture. It should be brief and uh, memorable, easy to use uh, in the translation of a poem. Uh, so uh, I advise you uh, 
to stay away from literal translation, uh, be more creative and think about uh, about the Bible uh, and uh, some biblical uh, symbols uh, which are connected with uh, purification and are easy to use uh, in uh, translation. Uh, and now, feel free uh, to pause the video and try to solve the riddle on your own. Uh, then uh, I will uh, read uh, my solution and uh, explain uh, it. And uh, my solution uh, is uh, is hizop. hizop. Uh, in English, uh, it would be um, hizop. Uh, why hizop? Because uh, it is the name of a mysterious plant uh, mentioned in the Old Testament, uh, most probably it uh, it signifies uh, caper. Uh, and this plant uh, in the Bible um, is uh, primarily used for purification. Uh, and the most uh, beautiful uh, biblical passage uh, mentioning his op, uh, is uh, Psalm uh, 51, uh, where we can uh, read, uh, Purge me with his op, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be wh whiter than snow. Uh, so uh, we have an element of, of purification uh, and I think um, that a scholarly bent medieval monk could give uh, his cat such a catchy name. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, it is uh, also uh, short and uh, easy to use uh, in the poetic, uh, poetical translation. Uh, that's uh, that's why I I chose uh, his op. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, as I said, uh, in translation, many paths uh, and ideas uh, lead to the um, good uh, results. So uh, your uh, solutions um, may be uh, much better than, than mine. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, uh, for your uh, attention uh, and uh, uh, I hope uh, I hope uh, that the lecture was uh, interesting uh, for you um, and encouraged you to to study translation at our university or elsewhere. Goodbye.